From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Non-profit organization, the South African Emergency Ventilator Project, or SAFP, was launched and marched in an effort to cost-effectively locally produce much-needed ventilators to meet an expected shortage. Natasha Urendal tells us more. A successful homegrown ventilator project has delivered a prime example of South African talent and collaboration, as well as a new opportunity to locally produce much-needed medical equipment in Africa for Africa and the world. Rand York Casting's joint CEO Justin Corbett speaks to Engineering News about this project. We started off with a, with a product that was being manufactured in the United Kingdom, had been manufactured since 1982. Um, we, we, we were inspired by this product because it was totally mechanical, mm-hmm. devoid of any digital components um, and was not reliant on electricity. It was driven by medical air and oxygen and, and we used that as a basis of our design going forward. Within a few months, the SAFE P team redesigned, built and tested the mechanical CPAP 100 ventilator which can be manufactured using existing local technology and locally sourced materials. The the final design had close to 800 individual parts um, as 10 significant sub-assemblies and even if we're working with a steam manufacturing company like MCR and like Bosch, individually we could not achieve the manufacture of this product in that period of time. So we took a page out of the automotive playbook we, we had the most unbelievable response from manufacturers throughout South Africa um, to assist with manufacturing and we, we approached a multitude of manufacturers throughout the country from the Cape to Durban to Johannesburg to Pretoria with a view to manufacturing individual parts and that's what we've actually done and, and very successfully. So, so if you look at our CPAP 100 unit quickly run through the individual components. The CMH2O gauge comes out of the CAPE. The flow control gauge comes out of the CAPE. Um, The on-off switch, and you say on-off switch, it's a very, very complex little unit, Mm. and that comes out of Dow Clay in Durban. And that in turn, we've got two or three other wonderful guys that are working on that little switch that are the tier two supporters to the tier one supplier. in, in, in the Gauteng area, we've got Bosch, who are supplying the regulator valve that comes out of Brits. We've got MCR that's doing the blender. We've got Reef Engineering that's doing the manifold block. So we've really been able to leverage the, the individual manufacturing companies with, within South Africa. And what we do here at MCR is, is we do the final consolidation of the product where we assemble it monitor the quality. The project generated overwhelming support from industry, with several large and small firms raising their hands to help after a call for assistance early in March. The most extraordinary thing that has come out of this is, is just the willingness of South Africans, every single creed and colour, uh, to assist with this project. Mm. And, 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 and it's just been the most exceptional experience to see this small mom and pop business that's got a little lathe in the garage, putting his hand up and saying, listen, please can I assist? Mm. To the big multinational like Bosch that's saying, listen, we're in, we're part of the country, uh, we might be German, but we're certainly part of this venture mm. and we want to assist. MCR Manufacturing's newly expanded warehouse was reproduced with assembly of the ventilators. We added on 2,000 square meters to our facility for expansion on our automotive product range as well as uh, supply to the uh, rail industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously with COVID that's been put on ice and uh, it presented an opportunity where we had a brand new facility with uh, polyurethane floors that could be quite easily adapted into the ventilator project. Mm-hmm. So we split the plant in two and uh, yeah, it works, it works out for, for what's required. Got a bit of spare capacity and obviously spare staff at the moment because of the COVID situation globally. Mm-hmm. We supply local market and export market and the markets are down. Um, so everyone that is permanently employed by MCR is now moved across to the, the ventilator side. And as you mentioned, it is 15 extra people that uh, we could get on board mm-hmm. uh, to help with the assemblies of the devices. 
Tapping into the Bosch global network of knowledge and sourcing was also critical to getting the project off the ground. The highly interesting thing, and that was uh, quite also an interesting challenge for me personally, was to tap into the Bosch network globally. Mm -hmm. There was, for example, one diaphragm that we couldn't really identify what type of material that was, so I reached out to medical device diaphragm manufacturers in Europe, who then identified what type of material, and then I reached out to people in Brazil, actually in our powertrain uh, division, who said, I mean, this is a similar diaphragm that we, knew, uh, um, that we use in mixes, in motor vehicles and they identified the supplier that we reached then out to again in Europe and who then was extremely eager and willing and very happy to supply us with samples and it worked. Mm -hmm. Just one example and we had other uh, colleagues in Shanghai who were uh, very instrumental with providing certain filters that we also needed etc etc. So tapping into the Bosch global network and of uh, knowledge and sourcing was uh, quite also crucial to, to get this project off the ground here in South Africa. These were the only two components imported, with the rest of the ventilator made up of local materials. We went for a unit that was built for Africa, for Africa, so we wanted it to be easy to use, very functional, very accurate, um, without electronics. Yeah. But our biggest drive was to make it local, yeah. and to have as a higher percentage as possible, which I think we're on about 99%. Mm -hmm. um, South African made. The only way we can solve this country's problems is by increasing manufacturing because that's the biggest employment pool that we can get. Mm -hmm. And we've got, we've got really good technical ability in South Africa, but everything gets farmed out because it's cheaper and it's all mm -hmm. about the bottom line. It's basically what, what the idea was to help South Africa mm -hmm. and also to prove, you know, we can do it. We can actually do anything. You know, we've done everything here before. Mm -hmm. Why are we giving it all out? me is um, a tremendous amount of excitement that, that we have this extraordinary manufacturing capability still in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And we are very grateful as a nation that we have this technical depth still in the country. And I think we've, we've really got to applaud the automotive sector for that. And of course, all our international partners that have really established themselves here in the long term. Meanwhile, the project team is also in talks with organizations in several other African countries which have indicated interest in procuring ventilators to help them with their own COVID-19 treatment programs. We are working with lots of countries and we're certainly encouraging as many countries to work with us. Mm -hmm. So that's in the African situation. Perhaps you saw one of our sort of banners there, African Solution. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, we are working with the Indians. The Indian uh, situation is quite dramatic. Very, very similar problems, yeah. uh, acute shortage of infrastructure and uh, through the offices of Bosch we, we, we've managed to connect with the Indian government and the automotive sector. So we're hoping that we could facilitate the development of the CPAP in India to help with their situation. I'm currently actually also in discussions, uh, for example, with a regional action group within the World Economic Forum and uh, other uh, uh, parts of um, uh, African Union uh, uh, authorities, mm -hmm. how can we create a medical device industry, for example, in Africa for Africa. Mm -hmm. And SafeP could be one pilot project, one lighthouse project, uh, which could show that this is actually possible. Even if it's not 100% of the components, but uh, even if it's more than 95% of value add done in Africa for Africa, I personally believe it's a very big achievement. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.